Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Make Do Mondays. Well, we finally arrived to the last of the three recipes that we um, chose as a community from this lovely book that I received from Dear Robin. And this recipe is carrot pie. Mmm, interesting. So <clears throat> I had to do some prep before I actually started filming this. Um, the first thing that I had to do was to take care of the carrots. So we're actually going to go back in time a couple of days, uh, just kind of doing this video piecemeal as I'm, you know, going in and out of the house and running errands and, you know, work and stuff like that. So we're going to flash backwards a few days and I'm going to show you first and foremost how I took care of the carrots. So let's, let's go backwards in time. Hopefully I look younger. So the first thing that I did, pardon my appearance, the first thing I did is when I got home from school today, today's Wednesday, I immediately got my carrots out and I got them prepared for this pie. This is gonna be kind of a two day event for me just because I have a lot going on. The carrots, they say in the recipe, need to be boiled, okay? I don't particularly like to boil vegetables. In fact, I hate boiling vegetables because I feel like it loses its flavor and all of its nutrients. So what I did is I took that pan, that precious pan that I used for the California chicken, and I cut up some carrots, about five large carrots. Okay, I cut them up and I put some butter in the pan with them. Okay, the butter's gonna add a lot of richness and that broiling and that, and that, that baking, that roasting of the carrot is going to intensify its flavor. And I put five carrots in. It seems like there's a lot of carrots in it and that's fine. If I have too many carrots, then I can put some aside and I can enjoy them later and they'll be delicious. So I've got them in a 400 degree oven right now. <clears throat> um, they're just finishing up. I just spent the last hour on my stationary bike, which is why I'm nasty right now but it was very gratifying. And it's a great way for me to catch up on my dear YouTube friends videos. Yes, and I have. And it's great because I've got my phone right there and I'm, you know, replying to, you know, different people. Today's, uh, today's video happened to be uh, Richard and Paul and Paul, uh, Richard made that delicious looking sausage and bean casserole. Ooh, not the best thing to watch while you're exercising. I don't know if this is sweat or drool because I was enjoying every minute of it. Nevertheless, an hour has passed. I'm done. I'm nasty. And the carrots smell like they're ready. So let's dip in and see how they're doing. All right, let's take a look at these. <sighs> Ooh, beauteous. Look at that color. All right, I'm just sticking a fork in it to make sure that it's done. And they're breaking up nicely. Look at that. So the idea is what I'm gonna do is I'm probably going to kind of crush these with the fork once they've cooled and maybe pass them through a sieve just to make sure. They have to be pureed. So I could also use a food processor if I want to, but these are perfect. And it seems like they've really soaked in all of that gorgeous butter. So I'm gonna let these cool on top here. Um, once they've cooled down, I'm gonna throw them into the refrigerator and then we can work with these tomorrow. Mmm, gorgeous. Look at the color. Mmm, and the scent. 
amazing. As it happens, those five somewhat large carrots actually produced exactly the amount I needed for this pie. So I'm really happy about that. Let me just go through the recipe one more time so that I can show you exactly what everything, you know, everything entails, everything you need. Um, at the top it says, although there was no shortage of pumpkins, commercially canned pumpkin was rationed and was difficult to get because it was in demand by service commissaries. With the proper seasoning, fresh or home canned carrots from the Victory Garden produced a delicious alternative for the duration. And this recipe requires the following. Pureed or cooked carrots, brown sugar, milk, eggs, flour, cinnamon, vanilla, nutmeg, salt, cloves, ground cloves, and then whatever your favorite pastry pie shell is, okay? Funny thing about that pastry pie shell is they actually have the recipe for that in the previous page. It says flaky pastry. And this is a single crust pie, so it only gives you a single crust recipe for that. And it's interesting because the recipe that I use for my pie crust is really, really, really simple. And this pastry recipe is nearly identical, which I found quite interesting. I mean, I have been using this same recipe for a very, very long time. I have to say it's one of the few things that I'm actually really good at when it comes to baking is pies. So I was kind of happy to see this. This one calls for two and a cup, two and a quarter cup all uh, purpose flour, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a cup of lard or vegetable shortening, and four to five tablespoons of ice water. If you substitute the half cup of lard for a half top, uh, cup of butter, which is just one stick of butter, that is my recipe to a tea, which is nice. I don't particularly like making pie crust with vegetable shortening. I tried it for a while and I didn't care for the taste. And then lard, I've never done. My grandmother used to make pies with lard. Um, I just find that, I don't know, butter. What's not to love about butter? It comes out beautifully. Um, so I actually made my crust a couple days ago and I threw it into the refrigerator. And all I did is I chucked everything into a food processor, whizzed it up, added my water until it just came together, threw it in one of these and threw it in the refrigerator. Okay, I've got this wrapped with plastic. It's important that you have a cold crust, okay, to work with. So I'm going to flip you around and show you all of the ingredients that you will need and I will tell you their exact measurements. And then once that's done, I mean, it's really just throwing the thing together and then baking it. Make sure you preheat your oven to 400 degrees. No, 350 degrees. I caught it that time. 350 degrees, preheat your oven. And let's flip around and see what we got. So here are all the ingredients. There's not a lot going on here, which is I, I, I find to be probably completely appropriate for the time period. They didn't have a lot of things and therefore they had to make do with what they had. So over here, I've got the two cups of pureed carrots, okay? They actually smell lovely with the butter, so I'm definitely gonna recommend that, but they do smell very, very carroty. Carroty, carroty? Smells like carrots. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Next to that, we've got three eggs that have been lightly beaten, a half a cup of milk, in my vintage LL Burgers mug, you can't see it, it's etched. And we're going to have to put a half a teaspoon of vanilla in. This is one half cup of packed brown sugar. This is light brown sugar. And then over here, we've got three tablespoons of flour, a teaspoon of uh, cinnamon, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, and a half a teaspoon of salt, okay? So this is the filling right here, and I have the pastry. I'm gonna be using this very old enamel pie dish. I've actually never used this before. It's always kind of been decoration, but this is definitely um, something out of that time, time period, okay? 
And then I have a very large mixing bowl over here, and this is classic Fire King from the 40s and 50s. Gorgeous. I got this from my grandmother. I got a set, <clears throat> so it was kind of nice. And a spoon. So we're gonna mix the filling first. The recipe says thoroughly combine carrots, brown sugar, milk, eggs, flour, cinnamon, vanilla, nutmeg, salt, and cloves in a large bowl. So everything that's here, it's gonna go into this bowl and get mixed up. I do have a spatula to get all of my pureed carrot out. Take a look at that. I mean, it's gorgeous color. It really is. It was, it's going to look like a pumpkin pie carrots with a little bit of butter. So I'm just going to empty this, throw it in the bowl, get every precious little piece. I always say that precious, very precious. All right. Don't be afraid friends to use your hands. Make sure they're washed, obviously, but don't be afraid to use your hands. I mean, I could have easily have used a spoon, but I feel like there's just nothing better than your own two hands to get dirty. All right, I'm gonna add the egg. That's three eggs, slightly beaten. Scrape that out. So all of these eggs with such a, a small amount of actual pureed vegetable is probably going to make it into kind of a custard. Half a cup of milk. I'm gonna put in my brown sugar. Before I do that though, I'm gonna break it up a little bit because it is really packed. Okay, I'm gonna break it up so it's just a little bit easier to mix in. Start a little dirty plate pile. I'm gonna put in my half a teaspoon of nutmeg. I'm just gonna eye it. I'm not my not my vanilla. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna just eye it. You could always add more depending on your taste. Flour, salt, ground clove, ground nutmeg, and ground cinnamon, all in. Mmm. Oh, it does smell good. Once those spices are in, I'm just gonna mix this up a bit. So the flour will help it to set. Okay. Broken a lot of that carrot up. Just trying to get this to mix in, but it is, you know, you're mixing egg with this puree and it's not necessarily going to come together as easily with a spoon. So I think I'm going to Pull out my little whisk here. Scrape all that goodness off and whisk it in. Yeah, that's doing the trick. I'm just gonna give this a bit of a scrape. scrape down the sides just to make sure that I get all of those ingredients thoroughly incorporated. Okay. Clean fingers, clean fingers. Don't forget. Give that another. Definitely has that pumpkin pie consistency. I'm loving the way that looks. Let's scoop a little and show you here. All right. This enamel top table is really ideal for making pastries. It stays nice and cold, which is nice. Um, everything is cold today. I woke up this morning and it was about zero degrees Fahrenheit and sunny, but very, very, very cold. 
Okay. Now I'm just gonna work this flower into the crust. And I'm always moving my work. I'm trying to always make the pen go backwards and forwards, not side to side, to get that nice round shape. I'm gonna be using a nine inch pie plate. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is wide enough. Gorgeous. I can see little flecks of butter inside. That's good because that's gonna make it nice and flaky. Um, I really don't worry about such things when it comes to um, single batch pie crust. If I'm doing a double batch, if I'm making like an apple pie, something that has a crust cover, then I become a little bit more neurotic about, you know, making sure that uh, the butter is extra cold and, and um, you know, handling the dough. But this is just going to be on the bottom. And what we're really, it's, it, we're really going to be going for that filling. This is just going to all kind of hold it together. Okay. There are different ways to put the crust inside of a pan. Okay. This is an ungreased pan. I'm going to, some people will fold. Okay they'll handle the, the dough that way. I find that if you just take the very end and roll it up like this, right onto your pin, and then you just roll it out like so. All right, now you can see there's actually a ton of leftover crust here that I'm going to be taking off. I'm just making sure though that it's sitting properly inside of the pie pan. Okay, I'm going to take the excess off now. I actually did an apple pie recipe last, not this past Thanksgiving, but last Thanksgiving. And I can't remember what happened. I think for the most part, I had video, but no audio, which was really annoying. Okay, folding it under ever so slightly so that it lands right on the lip of the pie pan. I'm just doing a simple roll just to tuck it in. Whenever I eat pies like this, like pumpkin pie or the, or the like, I tend to like to just <laughs> grab a sliver and eat it with my hands. I know how barbaric of me, but I just, I don't know. This will be refrigerated. Okay, so it doesn't look beauteous, but that's when you start to pinch. Okay, that's when things start to look really, really nice. So you're gonna be working with your index and thumb on both hands, and you're going to be pinching like this, okay? And we're gonna create a nice little ruffle. And you go all the way around. crimping the edges. There we are. Now, all I have to do is add this filling.
I mean, it smells really good. It smells like, it smells like pumpkin pie. I might be pleasantly surprised, guys. Pleasantly surprised. Okay. Scrape, scrape, scrape. I'm just going to push it around so it's nice and flat. Great. Oh, I got a little, a little bit in the pan there. There we go. Okay. So here's the pie. I'm going to let this sit for a couple of minutes because I have all of this extra pie dough, this pie crust, okay, this pastry, and you can actually do something with this so it doesn't go to waste. All right, so here we have all the leftover pie dough. I'm gonna kind of just bring it together. Move some of this flour out of the way. All right, now I'm going to create a very long kind of rectangular shape with this leftover crust, pastry crust. This is a great way to use up all the rest of your crust and give yourself a nice little treat. Now you could also, if you wanted to, throw it in the freezer, save it for a rainy day. But I don't make pie with all of that, uh, all, all that, um, what am I looking for? What's the word I'm looking for? With all that regularity and all that regularity. I don't, I don't, okay. Um, so this is something that it's similar, it's a, it's a take on something that my Aunt Jo used to make with her leftover pie crust. I zhuzhed it up a little bit though. All right, so I'm just going to take a little bit of milk and rub it on the crust. Okay, the milk is going to help what I'm going to be put in here, putting in here to adhere to it a little bit. Okay. Then I have, I always keep a jar of cinnamon and sugar mixed. This is what I usually use for when I'm making cinnamon rolls. And I'm just going to sprinkle this cinnamon and sugar mixture. On the inside, don't be shy. I'll make sure that we've got enough so we get a nice little sweetness to it. And then I'm going to take some chopped walnuts and I'm going to sprinkle them through the middle. I love, love, love walnuts. All right, so now I'm just gonna start rolling the pastry away from me. Jelly roll style, okay? And you're going to roll in those walnuts very carefully. Okay, I'm gonna fold this end in just so the walnuts don't come flying out. There we go. Close that end up. There we are. Now we've got this tube of pastry that is filled with cinnamon, sugar, and walnuts. I'm going to take a knife and I'm just going to cut them on the diagonal.
And of course, when my Aunt Jo was making her pies and she would make these, she would always send them along to us as well. And, you know, we would enjoy her pie immensely, but then we would fight over these because we just loved them growing up. We just loved them. Take a look at that. Okay, it's all swirled in. Cinnamon, sugar, and some walnuts. Now I'm gonna place this on a very large sheet tray, half uh, a half sheet tray. So I'm gonna put the pie and all of these kind of surrounding it and throw them all in together. So here's my half sheet tray and I've got it lined with a bit of parchment and I'm just gonna go around the edge with these. These are, of since they're made from butter, you're not, well, any fat is, you know, it's true, but you, you're not going to have to grease this at all. Okay. I love baking parchment. It was one of those game changers for me when it came to baking and doing other things. It's really ideal. And it's recyclable, which I love. Okay. So this is going to go into that 350 degree oven for how much longer did they say? 45 to 50 minutes. So I'm gonna go drop that in right now and um, we'll see what it looks like when it's all done. So I've taken everything out of the oven. Everything is done. The recipe says you bake the pie until the center looks set when pie is gently tapped. So I did tap the, the filling of the pie. It's definitely set. Take a look at this. I don't burn myself here. Beautiful. Mmm. Then just says here, cool to room temperature and then chill for several hours before serving. Just before serving, you can top with whipped cream if you so choose to. But, so I'm, I'm gonna throw this in the refrigerator and I actually have some plans today. I'm going to my brother's house for a couple of hours. My cousins are in from Florida. And I was hoping they may have brought some of that glorious Florida weather with them, but alas, it's just the coldest day that I have experienced in a very, very long time. I hope they're not, you know, chilled to the bone. So I'll throw that in. When I get home, I will give the pie a try. But for now, I've just poured myself a nice hot cup of tea and I'm going to enjoy one of these little pastry roll-ups. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Yum, yum, yum. This is where I feel like the butter in the crust really, really does amazing things. It's just that buttery taste. It gives it a little bit of body and a little bit of taste. Very, very flaky. Okay. Um, you could be, if you wanted to, if, if, if it's something that you do, you could give these an egg wash or you can um, take a pastry brush and wipe down with milk. Same with the crust along here if you want it to look, you know, really, really nice and shiny. I couldn't be bothered. It still tastes the same. Mmm. Just the right amount of sweetness. And that cinnamon and then the extra little crunch of walnut. Mmm. So this will tide me over until I get home to give that thing a try. So <laughs> I will see you several hours later and um, we'll give that bad boy a try. All right, it's been several hours and I'm back to try out this pie. First, I wanted to show you something. Just, I know since the last video, the, uh, that I, I planted up these bulbs. I just want to show you their progress. So there's definitely a lot more green on these paper whites than there were the last time. So they're starting to make their way, which is really wonderful. Um, and then the hyacinth, take a look at those roots reaching down. Does that look amazing? Now the top really isn't done much of anything. It kind of looks like a bird's beak right now. Um, but I'm going to give this a couple of days and I believe those first uh, leaves are going to start to open up. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait for the scent of that. Here we go. Carrot pie time. So the pie is nice and chilled 
it's nice and firm. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut myself a piece here. I'm, I'm excited, <laughs> I guess. Okay. Now the consistency feels nice. Knife's going through it with some ease. All right, I'm gonna lift this piece out. Okay, it looks like pumpkin pie, doesn't it? It smells like pumpkin pie. Cheers. It's interesting. <laughs> it's definitely carrot flavored. When it first hits my tongue, I taste carrot. I taste roasted carrot which is not something I would expect, a cold roasted carrot. But then the spices begin to warm up a bit. And it almost has this very pumpkin pie. It's pumpkin pie spice, let's face it. I mean, that's what it is. But it's definitely carroty, cold. Mmm. Okay. <laughs> the second bite was better than the first. I like, it's not a terribly sweet pie, which is great because I really, I don't like overly sweet things. It's actually kind of nice. Oddly enough. Mm-hmm. Oh, huh. I mean, I'm pleasantly surprised. We'll put it that way. I'm pleasantly surprised. It's very much like pumpkin pie, but you can taste you can taste carrot. It it's it's made with carrot. It's like <clears throat> I mean, yeah. I don't really know how else to. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Will I make this again for myself? Probably not. If you are in love with roasted carrots, I mean, I like them enough. I prefer them hot, you know, buttery, and with some kind of a, maybe a roast of some kind. I just, I, maybe it's just my brain getting used to the idea that A, it's cold, and B, it's a pie. You know what I mean? But it's definitely not a bad recipe, and I feel maybe with a little bit of tampering with the ingredients, maybe adding a little bit more vanilla, maybe even um, adding a little bit more cinnamon or maybe even some ginger. I think ginger would pair well with this. It, you can really change it to suit your, your own needs. But as it is, it's not terrible. I think it's actually quite good for, for what it is. Mm. The crust is really good, definitely. So yeah, carrot pie. Who would have thunk? I mean, obviously I don't hate it because I've just finished my slice. I'm sorry, you're probably listening to me chew constantly. I don't really like the sound of people eating <laughs> personally, but that got better with every single bite. It really did. The carrot, overly carroty taste kind of waned a bit. I got more spice, I got more um, richness. I felt it tasted richer and richer and richer as I progressed. I think maybe roasting it 
with the butter, intensified the flavor just as I had mentioned. Now I wonder if I had boiled the carrots, if it would have been as carroty. So yeah, you can definitely tweak this recipe, but hey, I gave it a go. I had everything on hand. And I'm sure back in the day, sorry. I'm sure back in the day, having something like this when things were so incredibly rationed was probably a really amazing thing. So I'm speaking from my own 21st century self. If I had lived during the war, during the 1940s and things were heavily rationed, having a carrot pie that actually tastes quite good would have been a huge treat. So I'm gonna give it two thumbs up. I think it's wacky and I think it's fun. I think it's very unusual. And I think it really delivered on what the recipe was saying. So interesting. So I have a whole book of these recipes and I'm, I'm I read a lot of comments, a lot, I think a lot of you would really like to see more of what's going on in this book, stuff, baking and cooking and things like that. So I think that might be the direction that I will take until the weather starts to improve and I start thinking about my garden again. As it is, it is so bitterly cold. Just to give you an idea, while this was baking, I went out into the backyard, walked through the garden, and I did it in my sandals. Well, I was wearing socks, of course, but I just threw on my Birkenstocks and walked through. The ground was frozen solid. It's usually a mud pit back there. I didn't have to worry about mud at all because it's that blooming cold. So I'm obviously not gonna be getting out into the garden to do anything anytime soon. So maybe I will stick with some of these wartime uh, kitchen recipes. I do have some milk that's about to go off which means I could probably do some kind of a sour milk recipe, which I love baked goods with sour milk. So if you're interested, if that's something that you would be interested in seeing more of, things that are happening, you know, uh, cook and bake wise, let me know in the comments below. But yes, the carrot pie, very unusual. If you really enjoy the taste of carrot, and you really enjoy pumpkin pie, by all means, make this recipe. I think you will really, really enjoy it. Yes. So that is it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's been, let's see, like three months in the making when I finally announced that I was doing carrot pie back when I was still wearing shorts and stuff like that. <laughs> Better late than never. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thanks so much for stopping in and please consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell, and of course your thumbs up. Leave your comments. I did manage to get through some comments a couple days ago. Let me know anything you'd like to know about this book or recipes, things like that. I would love to hear from you. I will see you all really, really soon and I hope things warm up for everybody, unless you're in Australia. I heard it's pretty hot there right now. I'd gladly take just a few days of your <laughs> summer-like weather. <laughs> okay, I digress. So long. <laughs>